Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna do the initial setup of Synology Surveillance Station. We'll add two cameras to it. I'll create a VLAN in my Unify UDM SE, and we'll also block them out from internet access. In an upcoming video, I'll show you how you could remotely view your Synology Surveillance Station through a VPN. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you enjoy live streams, games, and talking tech, I do have a new Twitch channel, which you could find in the description. And we do do YouTube live streams every Sunday at 11 a.m. EST talking about the latest tech news. First, before we get started in creating the VLAN within Unify, you could do this in any firewall that's capable of creating new networks and VLANs. But we're gonna take a look at the setup. So in my UDM SE, that's gonna be handling our traffic and our VLANs. That's plugged into a USW Pro aggregation switch. From the aggregation switch, we have a USW enterprise switch that is plugging into our Synology NAS. And the Synology NAS that I'm using is the DS1621XS+. The Synology has two different copper connections going up to the USW Enterprise switch. We have the black one, which is for our data traffic, and then this green one is for our camera traffic. And we're going to separate that. So these are on two separate physical NICs. At the front of my house, I have a USW Flex switch, and these switches are amazing for camera work. We're going to be connecting an Amcrest IP8M-T2669EW-AI. And then in the backyard, I have another USW Flex switch that's connected to the Catio. And we're going to be putting on a Hike Vision camera there. This is a pan and tilt camera. And the model number is DS-2DE3A400BW-DEA. I know those are long names, but I will put links to both the cameras in the description. Let's get our camera VLAN set up and then we're gonna block it from internet traffic. So I'm gonna go over to my UDM SE and we're already in the networks page. I'm gonna create a new network and we're gonna put this on VLAN 50. So I'm gonna call this SSS for Synology Surveillance Station. The router is gonna be my Mac Telecom SE. I'm gonna turn off auto scale and I'm gonna switch the host address to be 192 168.50.1 and I do it as 50.1 because I match my VLAN to the third octet. We want to scroll down below where we see advanced configuration and switch this to manual and then we're going to change the VLAN to 50 and press add network. Now this network is added but I don't want it to have any internet access so we need to create a rule. So we'll go to firewall and security. Now we're under our firewall rules we need to create a new rule. The type is going to be internet out, and then I'm going to call this SSS no internet access. The action is going to be to drop, and the source is going to be a network of our Synology surveillance station. The destination, we're just going to leave that to any, and I'm going to press apply changes. So now we can see rule 2000 has been created, and it won't allow internet out. So anything that's connected to this network won't have internet access. So if we need to download firmware updates for this camera, we need to download it to one of our computers and then push it to our cameras. Next thing we need to do, we need to tag the physical switch port with the surveillance station VLAN. And I know that's on my USW Enterprise on the port 24. So we're gonna click on that switch. I'm gonna go over to ports. We're gonna scroll down to 24 and under port profile, right now it says disabled, but we're gonna put that in SSS and then we're gonna apply the changes. So the next thing for us to do is to get into our Synology NAS and get Synology Surveillance Station stood up. Now it's time to get Surveillance Station installed on our Synology NAS, so we're gonna go over to our Package Center. From our Package Center, we could search, and from searching, we could see Surveillance Station, and I'm gonna install it. So one thing we wanna make sure, though, that we do is to turn on the firewall within our Surveillance Station, and I'll show you how to do that as well right after we get this set up. So all this, I'm just gonna leave at default, and I'm gonna press Next and then we'll press done and surveillance station will start to run. Now to make sure our one camera physical NIC is getting the IP out of a correct subnet, we need to go to our control panel. From there, we could go over to network and then network interfaces. And we could see on LAN two that we have that 50 network. So it's on 50.225, which is great, but we need to make a firewall rule so that 50.225 can't access our 10 network. So we're gonna go down to security we're going to click on firewall and then we're going to enable the firewall. We're going to apply the changes. I'm just going to leave this at default, but you can name it something else and we're going to edit the rules. 
The default firewall rules for Synology is to allow all access and we have our different interfaces on the side. So this is our all interfaces, but we want LAN 2, which is our camera network. And the only thing that we need to do is click the deny access. This won't be able to access our 10 network VLAN. And then we're going to press apply changes. Now to install the camera and behind the soffit, I have a block piece of wood so that the camera is stable. In the Hike Vision Pan Tilt camera we installed on the back of the Catio. Now that we have both of the cameras installed, we need to go to the switch ports that these cameras are plugged into and put them into the new VLAN. So if we go to my USW Flex switch, I know that the Amcrest camera is on port 5. So we'll go down to port 5 and then we'll put it into the profile of SSS. We'll apply the changes. I'll go back to that port and then we'll port power cycle so it grabs an IP quicker. Now the Hike Vision camera is in my Cadio switch and it's on port 4. So port 4 currently is disabled, but I'll put that into SSS. We'll press apply changes. We'll go back into that port and then we'll port power cycle. And once these grab IPs, we could either do a scan in Synology surveillance station, or we could just add the IPs manually to get the cameras added. Now looking at my client list, we could see the two cameras. One is on 50.161 and the other is on 50.125. They are now ready to be added into our surveillance station. So we'll go into surveillance station and then we'll go to IP camera. From IP camera, we're gonna add this. One thing with surveillance station, they do have license fees. The first two cameras are free. That's why we're adding these two. But after that, you need to buy licenses just so everybody's aware. So I'm gonna press add. And this is where it will do search for cameras. So if it does find it, then we could just add them right here. We'll give this a second to see if it finds the cameras. If not, we'll add them manually. All right, it doesn't look like it's found it. So let's just add it manually. So the first thing it asks is for a name. So we'll call this Amcrust. And then we could either have the brand, we could have that in Onvif if it doesn't find it, or we could have it the Amcrust name. Now we could either have it generic Amcrust, or we could look up the model number, which I'm going to do. So the model number for this is IP8M-T2669AI. So that's right there. And the camera IP is 192.168.50.161. And then we'll press add. So we'll do this one camera at a time. We're going to press next on this camera. And you could see that there's a little picture of my driveway up front. So we know that the camera is working and then I'll press next. I'm just going to do a quick setup, but we will do more configuration in surveillance station in future videos. So now we can see this camera is being added. Let's add the hike vision camera. We're going to add it manually. I'm going to call it hike. And the brand will put in hike vision as well. I already searched up the model for this hike vision camera and it's not in there. So we're just going to do generic hike vision and the IP is 192.168.50.125 and then we'll press add. I already changed the username and password on this camera. So when I press next, it's going to say that we need to authenticate. So under the status, we could see that there's no picture and then we could see authenticate here. So I need to put in the username and password and then press authenticate. And after we authenticate, we could see that my backyard is showing up and we'll press next. And then we'll just do a quick setup as well. Press done. And then it's adding the camera. So this is the Amcrest camera on the front of my driveway and it looks pretty good. We could see the timeline down below. The date is wrong, so I'm gonna have to go in and change that. On the left-hand side, we could see that we have our volume, we have a snapshot, and then we could do a manual recording, and we could also drag and do some zooms. This camera is supposed to have AI facial recognition, so in a future video, we will check that out as well. Now let's take a look at the Hike Vision camera. Here's the Hike Vision camera in the backyard, and we could see that we have more tabs at the bottom. So we have volume, we have hold to talk, because this has a speaker on it. We have an audio pattern, and then we have our PTZ controls, which we'll test out in a second. We have our snapshot, we have our record, we have our zoom, and then we have our digital outputs. And then we also have our autofocus. So let's try the pan and tilt. As you can see on the screen, we have this arrow. So if I just click and then I drag it, it will move to that direction. Now, if I go back the other way, it will turn that way as well. It's not immediate. It takes about a second before the camera moves, but it's still pretty good. One thing that we want to make sure that we do on all of our cameras is change the default password. So for this Amcrest camera, it's just on the default right now and the password is admin. Right off the bat, it's asking us to modify our password, which is great. But you need to make sure that you log into these cameras by the IP to change them. So that's going to be it for this video. This was just the initial setup and in getting our cameras up and running in surveillance station. 
Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see done with Synology Surveillance Station, and I'll try to put that in a future video. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.